Understanding the anatomy of the female genitalia is essential for health, confidence, and respectful communication. Yet, even today, many people confuse the terms clitoris, vulva, and vagina, often using them interchangeably. This confusion can lead to misunderstandings about sexual health, pleasure, and anatomy. Let's take a clear, respectful, and accurate look at these three important structures, exploring what they are, how they function, and why it's important to use the right terminology. To begin, let's start with the vulva. The vulva refers to the entire external genital area of the female body. It's what you see from the outside and includes several distinct parts. The vulva is not just one structure, but a collection of tissues and organs that together serve protective, sensory, and sexual functions. First, the outermost folds of skin are called the labia majora, or the outer lips. These are usually covered with pubic hair after puberty and serve to protect the more delicate structures inside. Just inside the labia majora are the labia minora, or the inner lips. These are thinner, more delicate folds of skin that can vary greatly in size, shape, and color from person to person. The labia minora surround and protect the openings to the vagina and the urethra. At the very front of the vulva, where the labia minora meet, you'll find the clitoral hood, a small fold of skin that covers and protects the clitoris. The clitoris itself is a highly sensitive organ, comparable in some ways to the penis in terms of its structure and its role in sexual pleasure. The visible part of the clitoris, known as the glands, is about the size of a pea, but this is just the tip, literally, of the iceberg. The clitoris extends internally with a body, two crura, or legs, and bulbs that are hidden beneath the surface of the vulva. The clitoris contains thousands of nerve endings. Estimates range from 8,000 to even more, making it the most sensitive erogenous zone in the human body. Its sole biological function is to provide sexual pleasure. Unlike the vagina, which serves multiple purposes, the clitoris is dedicated to sensation. Understanding this difference is important for both sexual health and communication. Just below the clitoris is another small opening, the urethral opening. This is where urine leaves the body. It's separate from the vaginal opening and is often overlooked in casual descriptions of anatomy. Below the urethral opening, you'll find the vaginal opening. This is sometimes called the introitus. This opening leads into the vagina, which is an internal muscular canal. The vagina connects the external genitalia to the uterus and serves several important functions. It's the passageway through which menstrual blood exits the body, the canal through which a baby is delivered during childbirth, and the space that accommodates a penis or other objects during sexual intercourse. To clarify, the vagina is entirely internal. It is a muscular, elastic tube, approximately three to four inches long, in an unaroused state, although it can expand and lengthen. Its walls are lined with mucous membranes and are capable of significant stretching and lubrication. The vagina is often mistakenly used to refer to the entire genital area, but it's just one specific part, an internal passageway, not the outside. Now, let's summarize the differences. The vulva is the name for the entire external genital region, including the labia majora, labia minora, clitoral hood, clitoris, urethral opening, and the vaginal opening. The clitoris is a small, highly sensitive organ located at the top of the vulva, mostly external, but with significant internal structures as well. The vagina is the internal canal leading from the vaginal opening to the cervix and the uterus. Why does this distinction matter? First, using accurate terminology helps us communicate clearly about health, hygiene, pleasure, and medical concerns. For example, if someone says they have pain in their vagina, but they really mean their vulva, a doctor might look for the wrong causes or solutions. Sexual education is also more effective when we understand what each part does. Recognizing that the clitoris is the main organ responsible for sexual pleasure in most women can improve sexual well-being and relationships. There are also important hygiene considerations. The external vulva requires gentle cleaning, but the internal vagina is self-cleaning. Using products internally can disrupt its natural balance and lead to infections. 
Recognizing where one structure ends and another begins can help prevent health problems. It's also worth noting the cultural and historical reasons for confusion. In many societies, open discussion of female anatomy has been stigmatized, leading to myths, misinformation, and even shame. Using the right words is a step toward empowerment. Understanding your body or the bodies of others is a foundation for self-respect and confidence. Let's take a moment to address some common myths. First, the clitoris is not just a tiny dot. As discussed, it has extensive internal branches and its stimulation can be an important part of sexual pleasure. Second, the vagina does not need to be cleaned with special soaps or sprays. It maintains its own healthy balance. Third, the vulva with its many folds and structures is diverse. There is no single normal appearance for vulvas. Variation in shape, size, color, and symmetry is entirely natural. Understanding these differences is also important for partners. Knowing the correct anatomy can help foster respectful and pleasurable sexual experiences. It can also improve communication between partners, ensuring that everyone's needs are understood and respected. In summary, the vulva is the external genital area made up of several distinct structures. The clitoris is a powerful, sensitive organ found at the top of the vulva, dedicated to pleasure. The vagina is the internal canal leading to the uterus, important for reproduction and menstruation. Each structure has its own function, and knowing the correct terms helps us take charge of our health, communicate better, and appreciate the diversity and wonder of human bodies. When we use the right words, we empower ourselves and others. Accurate anatomy education isn't just about science. It's about dignity, pleasure, and respect. Let's celebrate knowledge and keep learning together.